Welcome back, everyone, to the Not For Normies tournament. We are at our final match of the night. And tonight, for our final match, we do have I Hold Shift and Suds and Bubbles on the casting desk. How are you guys? I'm doing pretty good. I'm ready to go. You know, I got to watch some of that second game. And again, it's just really interesting to see how these, you know, lesser known teams start to develop themselves throughout the progression of one game, let alone throughout an entire tournament. So I'm really excited to see how these guys improve throughout their second games. Yeah, absolutely. This uh, can only go uphill, really. They uh, got one of these teams got knocked out, but they won their next game. And now we're going to see them again. So really excited to see how they've made adjustments. Yes, and Suds is talking about We Showed Up, who will be facing off against the, the, the Discount Avengers. So I hold shift. You were actually casting we, Sh um, we Showed Up's first match. And I was just wondering, what are some players who you think you'll be watching for in this next matchup to shine? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing was that battle up front. I think that Ultraviolet really did perform to the expectations that we had when he played the Ana specifically. But there was a little bit of mixed match up in the front line when it came down to those Zarya battles, those Reinhardt battles. How could they properly sustain themselves? How could they properly engage and make sure that they're not getting things like Earth Shatters being hit by shields or Graviton Surges being sucked up by Divas? I think that's going to be really kind of the biggest. Can they execute on the ultimates when they do build them up? Yes, and Suds, right now, Discount Avengers, they have an excellent Sombra player in Sesco. What do you think a Sombra player can really do to impact such a strong Ana player like Ultraviolet? So uh, Sombra is huge in this meta, especially against Ana. Just removing Ana's abilities is a huge play because she relies very much on the sleep dart, on the biotic grenade to protect herself and her team when flankers like Sombra show up. So if you can get the hack off onto her as your team engages, that can be a fight win right there uh, if the follow-up comes through. Now, both of these teams are in the loser's bracket, so they have suffered defeats already in this tournament. How do you think the mentality is going to impact who comes out on top in this game shift? Uh, it really comes down to being able to flex and adjust on the fly. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at we showed up to really kind of overcome some of their struggles that they had in the Goats versus Goats matchup that they had previously. I won't lie, though, when you take a look at a name like Discount Avengers, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping that their, team, <laughs> their names would be like Aluminum Man and Captain Canada and Arachno Dude, but I, I'm hoping that they bring out some of their strengths that make themselves look like the heroic Avengers, not just a discount version of them. Suds, so uh, we, we saw that the Discount Avengers, their strength is truly in their memes, they have told us. Um, do you think we'll see any interesting compositions coming from this team to back that up? I mean, it's certainly possible. Uh, although from the information we have, they look like they are a team that favors dive heavily, which is uh, a little unusual in the current meta. So it may force the uh, We Showed Up to actually adjust on the fly in these games. and. Their ability to do that, as well as the Discount Avengers ability to adjust to those adjustments is really what is going to determine the outcome of this game. Yes, definitely working on the fly, communicating with your teammates is so vital, especially as we are headed over to King's Row for our first map. I mean, we have been spoiled with the King's Row play already tonight. What makes this map so susceptible to some really successful tank play shift? It just really comes down to how narrow the map is. When you look at it width-wise, it's literally down one funnel the entire way. The whole map is a choke point as soon as you get that payload moving. So that's why you see Zarya being played so much. She gets essentially a lot of free soak. Her damage output goes through the roof. And when you have players that can really maximize the DPS potential of a frontliner, that's when things start to really kind of go your way. On the flip side, if you're getting a full, this is one of the things that I'm going to be looking forward to, I think, when we look at these Zarya matchups, is when there is a fully charged Zarya, a lot of players at the lower level will say, just avoid the Zarya, when you actually have to do the opposite. You need to dive her. You need to take her off the board immediately because she gets that ultimate charge so quickly when she's at 80 plus charge. So if they can just kind of look at that glow and be moths drawn to the proverbial <laughs> flame that she brings off, I think that's going to be a really big key as far as getting the advantage in team fights. So Suds, other than getting really close to that supercharged Zarya, what are some ways that you can counter a super heavy, most likely triple tank, triple support goats composition on King's Row? So the thing that you deal with with goats is that they basically just give ultimate charge to the enemy team. Goats I see is kind of a HP in HP out comp. You're 
taking a lot of damage, but your healers are healing up a lot of damage. So your healers get ults, but the enemy team gets their ults very quickly as well. So if you're able to get the ultimate economy early and then stagger those ultimates throughout the rest of the fight fights the game, you can pretty much dominate a GOATS comp just by doing that. So right now, it's time to see who's going to dominate during King's Row. I hold shift. I'm going to let you choose who you think will win this matchup between Discount Avengers and We Showed Up. All I'm going to say is on the team sheet, Discount Avengers came forward and said that they're top tier memers, but they don't have any Discount <laughs> Avenger names. So I'm disappointed that we're not seeing the Mighty Hilk or something like that come out to play. I got to go with We Showed Up. I want to see them come back and actually do what their name says and come back with the W. <laughs> what about you, Suds? Do you still have faith in Discount Avengers? <laughs> You know, I feel like we showed up, they just came off a win. They may be feeling a little high and mighty. Discount Avengers have to reprove themselves. They just had a loss. I think they're going to come into this game, get their heads straight, and really put on a show for us and take this one. Well, once again, the caster's desk is split. I'm going to avoid any conflict whatsoever. Let's go straight away to King's Row. I can't wait to see what comes on to our screens right now. Good luck, guys. Have fun. Thank you, Katrina. We'll miss you very deeply. And over to King's Row, we go first and foremost, Suds. And we already kind of broke down the map a little bit. But one of the most important parts of this map is the momentum that you can build as an offense and get yourself going, especially once the payload gets converted. Would you like to see some variety on the streets phase? Maybe bring in something like a Farah or a Sombra to get an EMP gameplay going? I mean, I'd like to see it. How likely it is, is... Yeah up in the air uh the other thing that we do see uh against these goats compositions is things like the sombra or and the doomfist that kind of dive can be very disruptive in the back line and you can kind of run an unprotected ana in that scenario because the goats composition doesn't really have anybody to get into your back line so yeah. uh you've got options there uh for sure and last time we saw, we showed up, they played the Goats Cop as we, you know, of course, have to talk about because it's what's dominating the game right now. But they played up against Team Vivid, who actually used a McCree on this first point and caught him a little bit by surprise. And uh, as we got to get things going, it will be we showed up rocking the red jerseys this time through while our Discount Avengers will be rocking the blue, and they will be the team that will be defending first and foremost. And uh, the McCree was an interesting pickup. It was one that, you know, found mild success. It helped the shield break, and that's kind of the biggest thing with these GOATS comp is can you burst down this Reinhardt shield quickly? Who are you looking at to possibly do that? Um, I mean, that's really... Gonna, a lot of times, if you do get a GOATS v GOATS matchup, you kind of can't even burst down that Reinhardt shield unless you've got a high charge, sorry. You just have to fight through it. Start swinging that hammer. Uh, try to force him to drop it to attack you. But if we do have uh, something more uh, DPS heavy, uh, we could see this possible Hanzo actually try to go for the attack onto that Reinhardt shield. All right, well, Tyler will take the top perch, throw out a Sonic Arrow, and will he switch? It looks like, yes, they just wanted the information in the Alderworth Hotel. And it just counted rate this week, if you want to rent yourself a room. And now coming back through to the main lobby and now on to point. Tyler immediately on the Brigida, but not able to find the Shield Bash stun, so possibly this advantage favoring the side of the party. I mean, the we should have had two up, but they're not really able to find Bitbot first and foremost. So a trade of frontliners. It is five on five without the Reinhardts, and it kind of comes down for me on what can Buck do on this Zarya. Able to get himself near full charge, but the damage is just not there. A nice little mini sleep on the Mark Killer, and with that comes numbers for the defensive side of the Discount Avengers. They'll hold that first attempt at a push. Yeah, that fight opened up with a big bionic grenade from Ultraviolet allowed them to get the kill onto Mist, but uh, losing Bitbop themselves, there just wasn't really the space making to go in and try to finish that team. And now Mist makes it back from the respawn and the uh, Discount Avengers are gonna hold. Samaritan, though, with a Graviton Surge and a Rally potentially being used for Discount Avengers. Meanwhile, Ultraviolet will be looking for that boost. Will they put it onto Bitbop? They will. And he'll go straight there for the nice Graviton Surge to pull everybody right under the Omnic statue. Toss an anti nade on top of that as well. Bitbop will find himself too, but the defenders also get a couple of high value picks. And it looks like Discount Avengers will hold this pushback one more time on a great Graviton Surge. Yeah, really quick charge on that Graviton Surge and really great placement. Trapped the, uh, we showed up right against that statue and were able to just burn him down. The Reinhardt couldn't protect everybody. 
And now, and moving into this next fight, they're gonna have plenty of ultimates on the defense still. And a handful of defensive ones, including an Earthshatter into self-destruct. It only finds one, but it's under the target of the Bob, and now Miz will also be boosted. A little bit more insult to injury as he comes through and slaps through a couple of more. And Ultraviolet will just narrowly escape with his life as he returns to spawn to reconsider how these next two minutes will go. Yeah, and really great job of getting the Reinhardt. Either the Reinhardt or the Brigida are the targets you need to be taking out to destroy this Goat's comp. But now Shatter for Bip Bob, he's going to be looking for a big one. And if they could break through this shield, that would be big. The Graviton first in the back line will start himself with a self destruct, holding on to that bigger Shatter for now. Bip Bob looking to come through, will use it, but gets charged and pushed away. So it does not make connection with the ground. Opportunity still, though, as they do find Miss, does the lead showed up. Looking to show up on the point. A minute 25, and numbers are favoring them, but still need to go through a handful of big bodies and a fully charged. Zarya on top of that. Miss very close to coming back to this fight with the Graviton Surge. A part of me with the Earth Shatter. He'll charge on through, looking to get there. But Bip Bob has already taken over a couple more. The Graviton Surge being charged once again. And now it will be We Showed Up coming through and getting the kills. And that's very fortunate because Miss was two seconds away from dropping an Earth Shatter. Yeah, Buck had a ton of charge on the Zarya that entire fight. He was able to build up a second Graviton after throwing one to initiate. And that is obviously what gave them the cleanup ability that they needed. Unfortunately, they're waiting on their Reinhardt. They aren't going to be able to take much space moving into this second point. So it looks like this next fight is going to happen at the choke. And Mist is going to have that Earth Shatter as well as a Diva Bomb coming from Sesco. And that's going to be big. Mist will be looking right around the corner, trying to get some third person perspective. That's why he's flashing his shield. Now coming to the back line, he finds an Earthshatter, hits a couple for the self destruct. The back line as well. We'll have to look at a number of kills onto the support. And with that comes the pressure and enough damage to clean up everybody. Nearly a full team kill as Bit Bob will come back on a spawn to avoid that caller being a full six man wipe. And that was an awesome diva bomb Sesco threw up through the window of the high ground that just got completely in the back line. His team rushed in and forced, uh, we showed up to just push back into that diva bomb and uh, take the damage there. I like that move though from We Showed Up coming back through. They went over to the high ground just to make sure everyone backed up. And once again, Bit Bob will throw out an Earth Shatter, but does not connect with anybody. The Biotic Snake will keep everybody alive though for We Showed Up, but they'll start trading away kills with both frontliners being up. This will likely just be a full cleanup. Buck will be boosted, and that will be the payload starting to move. Yeah, and he kind of whipped the Earth Shatter there, but he pushed forward and still made the space while the rest of his team was stuck in that Graviton Surge. It allowed his team to survive because the enemy was not in a position to do the damage he was pushing them out and now moving into this next fight the defenders will have the rally they are going to have a sound barrier so lots of sustain for them as well as the nano boost and the earth shatter attackers just gonna have the graviton and rally well, will be the boost first and foremost on the miss, but very nice job to peel back. But oh, once again, the Graviton Surge gets sucked up by a defense matrix, so no value there. And with that comes the sound barrier, but we showed up and they'll move right on in and they'll be able to clean up a couple of frontliners and supports actually in the back line, which will give them the numbers advantage. It's a five on four with the cleanup coming. Self destruct just to help the effort will go up, come down, but it won't actually find anybody from Sesco. And then again, we showed up, we'll control this payload and move further forward towards checkpoint B, not quite there yet it will be soft reset yeah it looked like mist got a little bit in a little bit deeper than his team was ready for he didn't have the support and went down early but now he's back and trying to contest this card as the diva bomb comes out for mark killer uh, it's not able to find any connection but bit bob takes that opportunity to throw out a nurse shatter immediately countered by samaritan in the graviton search but there's just not enough damage here for the discounted vengers as they take a discounted fight from the dollar store and won't be able to convert it and it will be payload moving through and likely hitting checkpoint b as soon as these last kills are cleaned up yeah discount avengers still trying to contest this though pretty big anti-nade there but it looks like just a couple of bodies left they should be able to push this in no problem moving into the third point with a shatter for mist on the defense so he's got the chance to turn the tide of this one in this next fight and oh, look at this, all six members are starting up a bonfire for the side of We Showed Up, all of them on fire and moving forward. Again, you mentioned the ultimate economy as it stands now, but a lot of members close to farming theirs up. It comes down to, can they get that initial poke? Tyler wants to move forward for the shield bash, but doesn't quite reach his target. And Mist will take that as a chance to move in. It's not having it. A huge anti-nade, it finds all six. But unfortunately, Mist gets booped off the edge, so We Showed Up having a chance to counter a 
attack. He's looking to get Lucio off the wall. Sesco will throw the self-destruct right down into the payload, which will not be able to find any kills. And with that, what looked to be a great moment for Discount Avengers gets completely countered, and we showed up, will win the fight and keep moving the payload. Yeah, that's a huge play to get rid of the Reinhardt. Throw him into the pit. Don't even waste the tri time trying to burn down his health pool. And now, without using hardly any ults, uh, the we showed up are gonna be able to push into this last point into this stagger fight with three of their own. Oh, but Bipbop does not have the angle he needed to to block anybody away from Spock with an Earth Shatter. Now that gives a chance for the defenders to come through. There's only 40 seconds left. Now finally the Earth Shatter comes in with the sound barrier. Soaks up a lot of that damage. And pooped off those Bipbop. Later, Gator, have yourself a nice synchronized dive off the edge. And how about some more as they continue to clean up? And what looks to be a for sure thing for we showed up, quickly turned around by Yugi in the sound barrier. 20 seconds for the last push. Yeah, again, booping that Reinhardt was basically the fight winner there. They did throw out the Graviton afterwards for the cleanup, but now, moving into the last fight, Buck with the only ultimate across the board has to land a big one if his team wants to take this into the third point. They need to burn this Reinhardt too. He's purple and he's so close to getting another Graviton, sir. Or burn to be an Earth Shatter coming through, but they're not able to burn him down. And D Mac is Mark Killer in the back line comes to self destruct and it finds three. Huge! And that will likely secure the defense. Pooped off the edge once again. Yugi put that away. There are ladies present, and he's able to find himself a third boop in those last two fights. And holding on narrowly again is the discount Avengers. Yeah, unbelievable play from Sezko in that last fight. Was able to eat the Graviton Surge coming out from Buck, and then that huge triple kill Diva Bomb just to seal the deal. Uh, he really put the team on his back there and made sure that they have the opportunity to win this map outright on their attack. Oh, that would be so heartbreaking for we showed up as this looks like almost a deja vu copy pasta from what they had against Team Vivid, getting to the very near end point, but not able to finish all the way through. So, man, this defense is going to have to be stalled. Where it, it, and to be fair, Suds, this game has been very close. Even though the payload made it nearly to the end, didn't quite get it there. The fact of the matter is these two teams running these three threes are trading blows left and right. Absolutely, the fight wins are going back and forth. One team will hold for a couple, they lose the ult economy, the other team will come in and take a couple of fights, and that's how we got that payload to just make that slow move from the start all the way to within meters of the end point. And uh, now we are going to have the, we showed up on the defense. It does look like they want to run dive tanks here. I believe they did the same thing in their first match. They are going to run this uh, kind of disruption dive with the Sombra and the Doomfist. So this comp is really kind of designed to pick apart a GOATS comp because you can get in their back line and kind of remove the defense abilities of their tanks. And that's really what you need to do in order to overwhelm the healing that you see come out in that comp. Well, they're going to know that Tyler's playing the Sombra. She did let one clip of the SMG go, and you can see that's why they're swirling around trying to deal damage and trying to do a little bit of a spy check. Tyler will be figured out and not able to get a full hack off, so opportunity for the offense to come through and potentially punish. Not able to get into the face of anyone is the Doomfist or the Winston yet, and Zenyatta in the top window just does not have line of sight to do any damage or get any of those Harmony Warps out, and now with a tick and a half already gone, the defense is finally figuring out, hey, we need to condense this point. Fortunately enough, Ultra Violet is able to hit a pretty thin Biotic grenade, but they're not able to finish off on any kills, and with that comes a full wipe coming out for the side of Discount Avengers. They'll take this first point rather convincingly, with no alts really charged whatsoever for the side of We Showed Up. Yeah, and you know, we did see Tyler get into the back line and get a hack onto Ultra Violet, but, or sorry, onto Ruby, but it just wasn't enough as the rest of his team was unable to deal with the tanks in the front line, but now taking a lot of space are the discount Avengers here trying to push we showed up back and allow this payload to roll through the first corner of this second checkpoint. Mormon will actually switch to the Lucio as well, trying to help out instead of that Zenyatta. So the defensive ultimate is just not there at this first engage, and that's going to spell trouble. Now being boosted in will be Bim Bob trying to find some way to make this library into something out of Ghost Buzz. It's those books tossing back and forth, but they're not able to find any kind of damage from whatsoever as Mormon will find the trade on the Yugi, but there's just too many numbers surrounding the payload so far for the side of this kind of vendors, and they'll punish all of the scattered defense that we've seen so far. 
Yeah, unfortunately, Bitbob going down first in both of the fights so far leaves his team in a very vulnerable position without their main tank to provide that shielding. They really don't have the ability to go in on a very strong dive. Now, looking for a way to get this. Again, no defensive ultimate whatsoever. 41% for Morbid. Meanwhile, a lot of flashing on the side of Discount Avengers. They do have an EMP. Does the side of We Should Have a Tyler's right on top of the payload. But he gets figured out. The EMP, though, is big. Self destruct in the back of the line. It will only find one, but still a six on four coming out for the defenders in red. They'll make that a little bit more in their favor as they continue to clean up on the backside of the payload. And the EMP is converted for a successful first defense. And that's exactly the fight you were looking for. These dive compositions tend to thrive in the ultimate fights. They can engage before the enemy has a chance to find a place for their ultimate and just end the fight early. But now, only sitting on the Meteor Strike and the Primal Rage, we're going to have three ults coming in from Discount Avengers. They throw out the Earth Shatter. Oh, but Mist does get his charge to counter. Not that it makes too much of a difference because the damage has already been dealt as two of the supports are already off the table. Make that full damages as well. It's just gonna come down to Mark Killer. He's already backed up as he says, no, thank you. I'll just go ahead and reset this one and look for checkpoint C as checkpoint B will come through at a nice time of three minutes and 25 seconds. Yeah, and just really clean, fast engage from Discount Avengers. Got in there, used their ultimates before we showed up, knew what was coming. And that's really what allowed them to win the fight. And now they're gonna have the Graviton Surge to try to survive this dive as well as the sound barrier. Still nothing from Morbid. And how about this boost coming to Bitbob immediately to the sound barrier of Yugi, who continues to impress on the meteor strike coming down. They do find Mr. First and foremost. So with that Reinhardt being down, it will be the go call for Bitbob to start slapping his way with those big monkey paws to push everybody forward into the rest of the team. Really smart play there, and Buck will be happy to clean up most of that. It will be just a little bit more of a delay on point with the numbers favoring the defenders that we showed up. It'll likely continue to be cleared up. Self-destruct just to put the nail in the coffin. We'll do so with two kills onto the frontliners and a D-back. So with that, will be a cleanup. And finally, Mark Killer pops off and gets himself four. We saw there in the back, the self-destruct came out. Mist got his shield up, but it looks like he had his shield poking through that self-destruct. So it was able to get people on both sides of his shield, unfortunately for him. But now there's the EMP to enter this next fight and wanting to keep the momentum in their favor as we showed up. The EMP will stagger away a lot of players, and my goodness, they just poke right on through, don't they? We showed up able to split the offense in half, but a very nice regroup around Ruby, who's now sporting a coalescence from the Moira. The rally here being used, and Yugi's able to find themselves a demon plus a kill onto the frontliner, so the tides changing in favor of the discount Avengers, who are able to get themselves a full team wipe coming through and getting this payload moving. Yeah, and they got that only using a couple of ultimates. They're still going to have the Graviton Surge. They're going to have the Earth Shatter. So a couple of options to try to prevent the contest coming in from We Showed Up here. No boosts for Buck, who's the only person holding on to an ultimate before We Showed Up. He's going to have to likely be the one who penetrates through with Bitbop, but not even giving a chance as Mist puts out an Earth Shatter and then immediately sucked in our three more players. But, oh, where's the follow-up? Finally, Mist is able to get there to try to slap a Morbid finally got a sound barrier, came through with a very clutch timing on that one to keep everybody alive. There's still short numbers as the Sombra has fallen. Buck is trying to do what he can to poke out some of these squishier targets, but isn't really getting the opportunity. He goes up, he goes down, he goes left, he goes right, and the sound barrier comes out to counter everything from Yugi and the Discount Avengers as they clean up a handful on the payload. Boosted his bit bomb, but the coalescence is there. The EMP, though, is actually at a pretty good timing as it keeps the frontliners mostly away for this last second attempt at a hold but it will be enough for Discount Adventures to look more like a full frenzied purchase as they find King's Row. Yeah, and uh, that last fight, we just saw a lot more damage coming out from the Discount Adventures. They built up several ultimates throughout the course of that fight, and we're just finding better value out of them than we showed up were able to with theirs. And, you know, a lot of it comes down to, again, when you take a look at Misha Duff, it, it, it was. It was trading blows left and right, especially when you see plays like this out of the Zarya from Buck. But those are things that are good to see if you're We Showed Up. However, the problem comes down to, did you get full value out of the rest of your composition? Because the Doomfist didn't really feel like it had the impact that they were looking for. The Sombra really only had the impact on getting those couple of EMPs. And beyond that, Morbid took forever to get Sound Barrier up.
Yeah, um, I don't know that we saw a single kill come out of the Meteor Strike throughout that map, and just the Doomfist I didn't see having the impact that he needs to have with his crowd control abilities. He needs to be able to get inside that Goat's Comp and just kind of push people around, separate them, because they thrive when they're real tight together in that Death Ball where they can get lots of value out of things like the Biotic Grenades, like the Moira healing, and... Unfortunately, they just weren't able to break that up, so the GOATS comp was able to just pretty much do what they wanted. And, you know, you've got to give kudos out to the Discount Avengers, who at certain times were pulled apart from being together and then would come back later, make sure that they adjust and come back as a full six to respond. Speaking of coming back together, Katrina, we missed you. Come back and let us know what you had to think about that. <laughs> I missed you guys too. I thought that was a really great round of King's Row. I like seeing when these maps get to the, almost the very end of the entire pathway the payload will take. Something that I thought was really interesting going into that last attack from Discount Avengers was that they were running a GOATS composition against the dive of We Showed Up. Obviously, Discount Avengers did win that round. What, what makes it difficult for a dive to dislodge all of the positioning of GOATS? Um, how, uh, Suds, do you want to take that one? Sure. I mean, it's really just a matter of timing that was missing from that dive uh, for We Should Up. They kind of were a little bit disjointed on the engage, and that allowed the Discount Avengers to get a foothold and just kind of push them off. Yes, and something that was also kind of interesting to me was the choice in supports. So um, Discount Avengers, they were mostly running a great Anna, um, Ruby was getting amazing anti-nade, so was um, Ultraviolet on the on the side of We Showed Up. However, that Anna was switched to a Moira yeah. on the side of Discount Avengers. Um, Shift, what, what's the advantage of having a Moira in that she's, situation? She's slippery. She's really hard to track down because she can use that little shadow step to get away as soon as someone dives on you. The survivability that that brings comparatively to an Anna who is just so stationary. She literally says, I'm going to crouch up hold this sniper up to my head and please don't push me. Whereas Moira <laughs> says, I'm just going to throw out a healing orb and then immediately phase shift away and then come back and all of a sudden I'm dealing damage to you. Plus the coalescence, it farms up so quickly. We saw it come out twice in a very late swap as comparative to the Lucio who had a really hard time getting the sound barrier up. If you're just looking, I mean, they're very different ultimates, but at the same point, they're also very high in support value. And when you're looking at a two for one, when it comes down to that ultimate trade, you're going to take that horse to the race every day. Yeah, I feel like it's very similar to what we were talking about earlier, just that you can run Ana against a GOATS composition because they have nobody that can reach back there and affect her. But when you're running into a dive like they were there, people are going to be able to jump on her and force her to waste her cooldowns trying to survive instead of having impact in the overall fight. And speaking of having huge impact, um, Sudsesco on that D.Va, we, we did know that he was an excellent Sombra player, but wow, being able to eat a Graviton Surge as well as having those amazing self-destructs, I mean, we were just freaking out back here. Um, what is the impact of having eaten a single Graviton Surge? That seems to be pretty rare, at least in my in my games. Sure, so any Graviton Surge eat is huge, and it's going to save you a fight loss, but when it's the overtime Graviton Surge, that wins you the map. So it's just unbelievable value there. Well, I wonder if we're going to see that again as we head over to the Zhang Tower. We can see a lot of variety with these compositions. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about it. Yeah, Li Zhang Tower is an interesting one as the teams are just about ready to go in, mostly because, again, it's very formulated around. You're going to see more of GOATS, more 3-3 three, three, three supports the tank frontline cops. And that's, you know, when I look at this early on, it, it kind of just goes for me that it already kind of favored this kind of ventures. It looks like it's going to be a rinse, splatter, and repeat here uh, on this map. At least that's what I would anticipate, Suds. Um, I, I think that's very likely, so uh, I can't wait to see how it does play out. <laughs> Well, uh, I, this is going to be interesting to see. Again, we showed up with their backs against the wall. This is already the bottom side in bracket. So they need to find a way to come back through and win two maps straight if they want this tournament to continue for them. Again, they've already made it through the qualifiers and now getting through the actual heat and the, the girth of this tournament, which is a very interesting choice of word. I don't know where that one came from, Suds. So let's not talk about it, though. And again, Li Zhang Tower, as you take a look at it, it is very enclosed spaces for all these points, no more so than Control Center, which is the first area that we'll be fighting on. 
Absolutely. Very lends itself quite well to these uh, tank support compositions that we've been seeing just because they're able to play in these enclosed spaces where they can get value out of that cleave damage from your Reinhardt Brigida and the group healing that an Ana or a Moira offers. So lots of opportunities to continue to do that here. And as we take a look at it, this is something that I, I noticed a handful of times. And when we were talking in the first game was, you know, what are the differences? What are you looking at that, that separates teams like this from the higher level teams? When you take a look at the D.Va gameplay, you, we, of course, mentioned the fact that Sesko had a couple of great defense matrices into the face of what was uh, would have been a Graviton Surge. But beyond that, it's also making sure that you're trying to soak up things like Fire Strike and things like Biotic Grenades. Talk to me more about like that mentality and that awareness as a, as a D.Va to, to make sure that you're actually capitalizing to soak those things up. Absolutely. It's a matter of finding those things that are getting ult charge for the enemy team and soaking those up because, as I said, Goats gives a lot of ult charge to the enemy, but the trick is to make sure you're only using it on things that are actually going to hit your team. If it's an erroneous fire strike, an erroneous Moira damage orb, you don't want to use your uh, resources to stop that. Oh, how about this? Tyler will be on the May and tries to split up the team with an earthly ice wall, but not able to fully successfully do that. And all of a sudden, Mist has got himself in a very nice spot, but here's a second ball, which will actually keep Ruby away from the line of sight. So that Ana needs to find a way to get a biotic grenade down sooner rather than later, as the rest of her team is falling low, including Samaritan, who is taken apart first and foremost. And with that, Anna Brigida being pulled away with another nice ice wall on the fist. This will likely be a team fight going away early for the side of we showed up, but not going away yet, but really they should. And the blue team, as they will fall away, Discount Avengers will be taken off this first point eventually. Absolutely, just respawns coming in here, and I actually really like this May pick from Tyler. It's a surprise to the enemy team, and he's making really good use of these walls to split them up and allow his Ryan to get charges he shouldn't be able to go for. This is catastrophic for uh, Discount Avengers. The ice wall continues to stagger out one and then another mist falling to the wayside. And again, take a look at this positioning. It's already up to 16%. And when it comes to tactically retreated, they needed to do that sooner as Yugi gets staggered as well. And take a look, six ultimates already up. This is gonna spell disaster for the Discount Avengers. Uh, yeah, and again, Bipop getting way overextended there, but the Maywall into the spawn door saved him long enough for him to get back. And there's another one just to try to lock these teams up. Losing from the far side, a nice try out of grenade to try to keep people purple, but the Blizzard was used in response to zone away everybody, and now the Ultra coming up for both sides, but the sound barrier does not really do enough to keep everybody alive, as look how much damage is being funneled here. It's just great pressure for we showed up. They are having their way with these this kind of Avengers at the moment. Yep, a lot of ults came out in that fight, but now Inarashi going to swap onto the May himself, see if they can't just mirror comp this to a win. But unfortunately, Ruby goes down early here. You know, it's one of those elemental questions. If fire can fight fire, can ice also fight ice? I don't know if that's a Pokemon elemental question or just general things for Alaska to consider, but it looks like they want to try to make it happen. It's not going so well. Is this the response you want to see, or would you rather have something a little bit more dive focused and try to take May out of the fight earlier? So I liked what they did there. They did get the overextending tanks walled off. Unfortunately, they just were unable to capitalize it. Those tanks just had too much sustain to uh, not continue to get those kills, but they have pushed the fight back to the point now. They need a Graviton Surge to hit the Ice Wall. Actually, they gave some of that early Graviton Surge for we showed up, so mistakes being made, but they're able to still fight Miss. He was not able to get his Earth Shatter down. The Blizzard also coming out to zone out the front and back line, now using one of their own as Inarasha, but again, there's just nobody else left here, so we showed up, we'll clean up the point in overtime, and it will be a 100 to zero in the backhand of Tyler playing a very nice May. Yeah, and uh, right there in that last fight, as it opened, we saw great use of the two tank ults on the side of the, uh, we showed up. We see the Graviton Surge come out. They did, they paired the Diva ult with it, didn't get the value, and then followed that up with the Earth Shatter just to make sure that they could finish off those kills. That's really well done, especially in a last fight when you just want this map to be over already. Well, it's uh, looking to be over sooner rather than later if it continues to follow a trend that it did in part one of our expedition on Lijiang Tower. For part two, we'll change the scenery and go to the gardens 
And uh, this will be interesting because this map very diverse when it comes to do you go white, do you go bridges, and it comes a lot down to what compositions you're facing up against. That's right, I expect the GOAT's composition of the Discount Avengers to go white. A uh, little more versatility here for We Showed Up. They will go bridges and uh, try to get the dive in onto the Discount Avengers here. Now, it comes down very importantly for We Showed Up. Can they continue to maintain line of sight so these supports can heal up their frontliner? Tyler as well needs that line of sight to deal damage on the McCree. He's already dealing a lot as he's trying to break through some shields and will do so successfully. The point mostly in control of the team wearing blue, but still, it will be an easy contest and that's what we'll see. No picks as of yet. Moving now towards the left-hand side, respectively, is We Showed Up and they find an Arashi early on. The Brigida being down is huge, but without having the Matrix up as Diva gets the match, it's going to be a call lessons coming up in a immediately stunned away so that will be canceled but the numbers are just too much the damage has already been dealt and finally the discount adventures will take an advantage yeah a uh, really good fight win from them and really part of it is just a little bit of a disjointed team comp coming out from we showed up they've got the dive tanks but then in the back line they're running the mccree zenyatta and the uh brigida who mccree needs a lot of support and uh zenyatta is not exactly the guy to give it to him while brigida needs to be frontlining with those tanks so i'm interested to see what they really try to do with this composition moving forward as they get these ultimates online and i'm not a fan of them coming over towards white they don't have a big shield they're able to block anything and that's exactly the case high noon will come down but it won't find any kills he gets immediately taken down by Inarashi. now a self-destruct in a very close quarters will it find any damage it will not but the numbers again still favoring the side of the discount adventures and that's a really interesting call to go white and you're not using a reinhardt there's nothing to block damage as you try to funnel through that choke point absolutely really strange to go there and just immediately pop a mccree ult it looks like we are going to get some swaps bit bob onto the reinhardt ultraviolet onto they're just going to go goats on a goats here so a uh, little bit more of an even fight moving forward ana versus moira the only difference in these compositions well, they will have a chance to break on through since there is no Earth Shatter or Graviton surge for the defending team of this uh, discount Avengers. Now the self-destruct being thrown at the point, but will be smoked up by Miss. The goal lesson falls to the back line as the defense continues to try to hold both well, defense because they're on the point and holding the control at 70%. Earth Shatter comes through, but not able to find any stuns. Now fully charged is the Baron, and he's close to a Graviton surge. He needs to pull the trigger as soon as possible while they're still choked up on this small bridge. Spooked around as Yugi is able to put Bit Bob into that little lily ocean and that'll be enough for them to win the team fight once again there's only one more go at this if you're lucky for the side of we showed up yeah they need a quick regroup if they want to have another shot at this point and uh really just unable to push through that choke with inarashi there on the brigida getting those stuns onto the reinhardt but they need to touch this point right now Oh, Mark, you don't need to be going down, but you need to be soaking up that Graviton Surge. And even though he wanted to try to get the overtime touch, the Graviton Surge was used from Samaritan, but immediately responded is Bitbob, who somehow lived through all of that damage. And now, finally, in overtime, Tyler is able to get himself three kills on the back end of a later Graviton Surge, and a team kill comes out, finally getting control. Are we showed up? Yeah, and Mark Killer actually did a great job. He got at least one or two of the members of the Discount Avengers to turn away from that Graviton Surge, so the follow-up wasn't there, and the, we showed up, were able to withstand it, pop their own, and win that fight. But they've got a long hold ahead of them if they're going to win this point. Rallies will be traded between both squads as going through the white room. Will be the side of this kind of entries. Earth Shatter will find a couple self destruct being thrown up, but Bit Bob was able to soak up all of that. The coalescence also being used as a means of doing both damage and healing. And the Earth Shatter from the right hand side was made for Bit Bob. He'll charge on through and find some extra damage to the back line, trying to contest as long as possible. But he showed up, already won that team fight, and it will be another team fight for the team in red. That is really great repositioning from Bitbob. He got around to the other side of that center post on the point and just got a shatter from exactly where they weren't expecting it. Huge. That's a, he allowed his team to get the cleanup, and now they have the advantage in the ult economy moving into this next fight. And this is going to be so hard to push. They do a Graviton Surge, does this kind of vengeance, but they're already met with one from Tyler's hand, and they're able to find four kills just like that. Thanks for playing. Thanks for trying. Why not go back to base and reconsider that push next time?
Yeah, first grab typically wins in a fight like that. Unfortunately, when you're holding the point, you want to draw that fight out as much as possible. That was a quick one. Luckily, they only used two ultimates on it, so they will have the Earth Shatter and the Sound Barrier for this next one. But Sound Barrier and Graviton online for the Discount Avengers, they've got a good shot here. And Mist is able to get up front and soak up a lot of damage, but he immediately gets taken down by a Vada Grenade and another Earth Shatter. Bit Bob coming through big. Oh my goodness. This is looking like an absolutely one-sided affair out of nowhere as it's 99% and will be 100. We showed up, able to come back down 99 to 0 to find 100 straight percentage points to get themselves the must-win map. Yeah, and that absolutely came down to them making that compositional swap about once the enemy team had held the point for that long. They made the swap, they still had a couple of ultimates from their initial comp and used those to push in and win the point. Just excellent play from them throughout that map. Well, they needed to win it, and they do. So now we head to map numero trace. If you don't speak Spanish, that means number three. I know that was a tough one. Serving up some softballs to the audience out there. I don't know, do you speak Spanish, Suds? I am actually fluent in Spanish. No. Yes. Surely not. I am. So I understood your simple number question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just wanted to make sure I could be reaffirmed as well from that. So again, map number three. That was an exciting one, only from the simple fact that I think that we showed up, finally had some success running the goats and made their opponents actually start to adjust and respond. And they did so rather unsuccessfully that time through. So is this new life? For we showed up or is just just you know they pulled out the right straw at the right time it very well could be new life and possibly to their benefit the final map in this pool is going to be oasis so it's another king of the hill map where we just saw them have their kind of boon in um performance so very good chance that they're able to continue to take these maps here however oasis coming up a much more vertical map for the most part, with the exception of university, there is a lot of extra environment that goes northward if you're looking, you know, northward being up. So when you take a look at this, does this cater more towards that Winston Diva potential jump or are you looking to continue to have that Zarya Ryan Diva on the ground with a 3-3? So you certainly have the ability to run some dive compositions here. But again, the dive composition requires a lot more coordination and like moment to moment communication than something like GOATS does. So yeah. it's going to be a matter of performance in a comp like that. Whereas the GOATS v GOATS it can come up, it comes down more to the little things than uh, actually hitting that dive at exactly the right time with four of your players. Yeah, that's a very, very strong point. So we'll see where we start off first. Of course, the three different areas are wildly different when you take a look at Oasis through and through. And uh, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. You know, we showed up. They came through with Tyler pulling out something out of a hat with the May, and they was able to make it successful in control center. And then they just outperformed late. Granted, they did it at the last second with that last team fight on the Nightmare Garden. So now moving forward to Oasis, I would personally, I would be okay with uh, them doing something a little bit more out of the ordinary again, just to keep this kind of ventures on their toes. Absolutely. It's possible that May was somewhat of a comfort pick, which is why it seems so odd for Inorashi to go ahead and match that pick, unless it just so happens he also plays the May. But uh, yeah, I think doing something a little out of the ordinary could be very beneficial to them because we've heard that a lot of these teams at this level are doing nothing but practicing goats v goats in their scrims. So when you come up against something that's not goats, it can take you some time to adjust. And on a king of the hill map, that amount of time may be enough to for that team to cap the point. Well, uh, speaking of things not going as smoothly as we may have expected, it will be a little bit of a delay in between as the teams need a little bit of a break. It's fine. It happens. Everyone needs a break every now and again as there are some things going on in the backgrounds. But since it's so nice, we want to see it twice. Let's go ahead and bring Katrina back to see if she can give us some extra insight on these two teams. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Shift. So uh, I, first of all, would love to go back to talking about the maze. Um, Little does everybody know, before all of these maps, um, Shift and I and our lovely producer were talking about how much we all love May. So I just want to say I told you so. Um, but now going back into that, um, I noticed that there was extremely positive momentum going for We Showed Up 
on that control center map, they eventually did have that 100 to 0 percentage victory. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it, yes, we do talk about the May. I think the Zarya's had such a major impact. Buck had managed to charge entire Graviton Surge, whereas Samaritan was only at 37% after that first control take. So I would I would want to ask which characters do you which heroes ultimates do you think are the ones that you're watching when you're casting or playing? Which ones are you looking out for to make those major differences in the next fight? For me personally, I think that when you look at things like the Graviton Surge, yes, it's, it's a huge game changer when it comes down to turning the tides of a fight. As Suds mentioned on that map, whoever hits the trigger first on maps like Lijong usually wins the fight. Of course, Earth Shatters are big, but I want to really hit on these nano boosts that we've seen. We've seen a really couple of really clutch timings when, you know, it was, for instance, a couple times that Bitbob was purple, falling low, and then at the immediate second that he loses that biotic grenade effect, he gets boosted and survives that much longer. The support ultimates, they are what make the games really go on. These fights go on and can turn the tides midway through. So if you don't get started off on the right foot, you just keep putting your feet left, right, left, right, and you finally get that support ultimate that really can change the tides. And I that's think, why... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the tank ults are the ones that open the fight, but if you've got the support ultimate to counter it, that gives your team the opportunity, like you said, to come back and survive those ultimates. Yes, and that's why I give my supports all the endorsements <laughs> after every single match I can. I, I am a spoiled tank when it comes to my friends who are supports. But I was also kind of curious to focus on those characters again we saw on Gardens a Goats with an Ana against a Goats with a Moira. So Suds, when you're pairing up those two triple-triple compositions, who's going to get the edge out of those two? Um, it's honestly a tough call. It depends on a lot of things, but uh, That's the, Ana, the Ana is huge with those biotic grenades. If you can get a biotic grenade over Rhine Shield or in while the Rhine Shield is down and get that healing to be eliminated. It doesn't matter if you've got an Ana or a Moira on the other side, they can't heal their team and they're going to get burned down. So a lot of times I would say the Ana is probably my preferred pick, although just total healing output, the Moira does uh, have a little bit of an advantage because of healing through characters. Right. And we are headed to Oasis for our last map. So we are going to see two control maps going back to back. Um, I, hold, I hold shift. Do you think that right now we showed up has that momentum going in having just one two to zero on Li Zhang? It would be hard to dissuade me of otherwise, I think, especially, you know, it did look narrow for, you know, it started off 100-0, you almost got 100 0 yourself, but then in, in theory, you 100-0 your opponent again. Like, it's just a lot of this very drastic polars of back and forth when it comes to control, typically, especially on Li Zhang, where the entryways coming out of your spawn are so limited. Now, on a map like Oasis, there's a little bit more flexibility when it comes to, like, city center and stuff like that as far as how you can get to the point. So I think that when you look at that, you're not going to see as much of a drastic 100-0. to zero. You're going to see a little bit more vying for positioning on top of the point rather than before the point even gets exposed. So I think that when you look at the momentum, yeah, I have to think that we showed up as carrying it into this game. However, does it really count for much when you go from a map like Lijiang to Oasis? I don't think as much as we would typically would associate it with when it comes down to things like control maps. And Suds, do you think Discount Avenger still has an opportunity to defeat We Showed Up on Oasis? What do they need to do to really get this win? Uh, they have the opportunity. They need to show us a little bit of what We Showed Up uh, was showing us in that last map with the versatility, the ability to change your composition to um, defeat the enemy because we saw them pretty much run the same thing. They swapped to the May, but that didn't exactly work out for them either. So we need to see them be able to identify the problem and fix it during the match. Well, my fingers are crossed for another May, but I don't know. We'll see what happens, but we are about to find out for sure as we do head over to Oasis. Have fun, guys. Thank you so much. And I, I think when you take a look at, you know, trying to force, a, not force, but if you're trying to get a victory if you're here, if you're looking at the sign discount Avengers, I think you need to try to force uh, the side of We Showed Up off of Goats. I think we saw that when they're playing things like Sombra and Doomfist, they were not playing nearly as successfully as when they do play this more controlled 3-3 comp. So as you try to look to do that, 
where is your first look? I mean, obviously, Christina wants to see a May. I, I don't anticipate us seeing that one. But what else could we give Katrina to feed off of later? What are the other spicy pick that possibly break up uh, this 3-3 here? Um, that's a tough call. You can try to run some sort of dive into it, especially when they have that Ana, as we've been discussing. If you can get back there and get the Ana, that's essentially the primary healing, and those tanks aren't going to be able to sustain any longer. So, some kind of dive, maybe something like this Pharaoh we're seeing, especially on these vertical maps, uh, could be the key to getting them to have to abandon the GOAT's composition. Well, typically off when we see this map being played, there is one of two choices. Either you try to push straight for point or you try to find control of the jump pad right next to that mega pack. So it really comes down to what will the teams decide as we're about to jump in. It looks like for the side of we showed up, they will not be showing up with goats this time around. Actually, neither team will. We will be seeing the Winston and the Divas coming out for some potential upward dive. Buck will be playing on this Farah. So again, that's an early way to get some extra damage with the pharmacy pick. Absolutely, and we're going to see the engage start to come in here. We've got the tracer as well, so big opportunities to blow up some of those squishies on the side of We Showed Up. And now Buck taking out his counter first and foremost as he takes down Sesco. Ruby also falling away, gives it a six on four on the point. And as it opens up for contest, interestingly enough, there will be a pick on the Bitbop who could not find enough fueling, but it does not make a difference as Ultraviolet hit a pretty clutch biotic grenade to get the rest of the members off the point. First control going the way of We Showed Up. Yeah, and some interesting hero pools here on the side of Discount Avengers. We've got Samaritan over onto the D.Va. Sezko, who we saw great D.Va play from earlier, is on the, those hit scan rolls. So uh, we'll see if Samaritan can live up to his uh, teammate here. And we got ourselves a little battle of the skies, as it will be Pharmacy versus Pharmacy. And the late switch from Inarashi, who will be looking to shoot upward, which usually does not go in your favor if you're trying to fight those far versus as far as the barrage coming down but not really down it was more shot up towards samaritan and not able to find any value from it so now how can the side of this kind of entrance come back looks like they will not be able to at least not initially as interashi will be taken down and ruby also falling does not spell anything great as there will be no res this time around so the numbers will stay as they are which new favor we showed up 40 percent and counting as samaritan will be the next target as they will boost up bim Bob, able to find the self-destruct blade but that won't find any value more of just a stall tactic and potential way to survive and ooh, interesting call here suds so miss going into the primal rage just to try to contest but he immediately has to jump out and will be chased as well not able to quite find the kill, but the point will stay in control if we showed up. Yeah, he was alone there. Primal Ranger, great stall ultimate, but if the enemy has control of the point, you're stalling for them at that point. So, uh, not really doing a lot, but they're coming in here. Yugi will have the sound barrier to try to sustain this fight. They need to find a way to get this far out of the sky. Sound barrier coming out, but it's a very scattered one. The rest of the frontliners were already on the high ground, so they don't actually find any happiness from that extra health pool. They will find a bolt spam on the miss. Ruby taken down once again, and with that primal rage for Bitbop, they will continue to chase chronically over the side of uh, part of just got adventure. So we showed up again, looking as convincing as they were on Lijon. Yeah, and I actually really like seeing uh, Morbid using the Resurrect onto Ultraviolet on the Ana. Uh, usually you'll see it used on the Farah, but here Ana is a big part of your team if the Mercy's focused on that Farah. Samaritan already taken out, so the EMP will come out, but there's just not enough follow-up at the moment. And with the kills continuing to come in for We Showed Up, they will likely clean this one up as they expend the rest of their ultimates to do so. Ruby will find a res, but it does not matter for much as they will immediately take down the Mercy and then follow up with a cleanup kill. So it will go 100 to 0 in favor of We Showed Up. Yeah. Uh, it looks like some of that momentum did help them out here, and actually, now I'm wondering, there was a map draft here. I wonder who drafted this map, because it does look like We Showed Up is a bit more confident on their dive compositions than the Discount Avengers. Discount Avengers looking really scattered. I didn't see Sesco do hardly anything on the Sombra throughout that map. Yeah, I mean, it was a late swap to begin with. He was playing the McCree early on and got immediately picked by the pharmacy combo. And that's not what you want to see. He was dissuaded from keeping that hit scan. That really is the only counter 
to that pharmacy and they decide to go, well, if they're going to run pharmacy, we'll run pharmacy. And it didn't really pan out for them. But now as we go to university, likely going to see goats coming out for both teams. And that's going to be the case. Yeah, so another chance here for both teams to run this goats v. goats. Ultraviolet still on the Ana, Ruby on the Moira. So just that slight tweak to the comps. We'll see who's able to make better use of it. Well, coming through the left-hand side, perspectively, for the side of we showed up, they'll meet each other head on. and. Biotic grenades will trade and will favor a kill on the Tyler. That's not what you want to see as Mist will absolutely swamps right on through. And with that comes a team kill as traditional fashion does. When you get that first pick on goats, it will mean control for you. And it was a six for zero trade. Yeah, Bitpop got stuck down into the hole on point and just had to sneak his way back to his team here. Unfortunately, him going down there left them totally open to be uh, killed. And now Mist is going to be looking for this Earth Shatter on the engage. And they have that ultimate advantage very starkly, but it gets countered immediately, not able to find the trigger on it. Another Biotic Grenade opening up opportunity for we showed up an even battle. It will be a vanilla fight for the most part until Ultraviolet can get that boost up, which now he has, and he'll immediately move up Big Bob, who will come through and look for a couple of battering bashers as well to continue our alliteration into the base with the coalescence into the background of the Earth Shatter from Big Bob, able to clean up a handful, but he misses the charge completely. So an opportunity for the team in control to continue to stall the self the struck will come through and we showed up will be able to seize control as soon as they clean up this fight yeah and that fight was able to even happen thanks to tyler you know a good brigida will stun the enemy rhyme so that you can get your shatter off a great brigida is going to stun him out of his shatter so that you can get your shatter off and uh he did stun him out of shatter right at the start of that fight which allowed his team to push in here and now 43% was the stall out. On the side of the Discount Avengers, they had a hard time recontesting on Li Zhang. Need to find a way to do so here. The Graviton Surge will try to negate that though, and now charged into the wall goes missed, and he'll be taken down immediately. And if you're looking at this from the perspective of the Discount Avengers, you need to get out of here. Without this being here, this is pretty much a fight that you will not be able to win. They're able to get a couple of cleanups, but how long can they really stand on this point and fight as they come back through Bitbop not being there could possibly build success for this recipe of a recapture but 44 percent for the side of we showed up so they will actually recontest that they found the late tread on the bit bob a little bit of a mistake there as they could not keep the reinhardt alive yeah it looked like the discount of injuries recognized that ryan was low and was able to push into him even though their own reinhardt was already down and now They've got the ultimates to continue winning these fights. They've got the Graviton Surge, the Sound Barrier, and the Steva Bomb. So the rally came out for the side of we showed up, but immediately met by a Graviton Surge. And Bitbob will not be able to negate himself from the self that struck. So advantage once again going in favor of the numbers of Discount Avengers. This time through, there will be no continued battle as we showed up. We'll back up and reconsider how they want to get in here as Bitbob again has no Earth Shatter coming through. Yep, some ults came out for we showed up in that last fight and they were unable to get anything out of it. They're hurting in the ult. Oh, missed from the top rope to the Nurse Shatter of his own. Will actually not be able to find the targets that he wanted to because of the move. The Graviton Surge will be successful in soaking up most of the backline, but the Transcendence from Ruby is also here to keep the team in blue alive. They still have Mist, who's trying to get himself another Earth Shatter, but he's not quite close enough yet. Graviton Surge being thrown on in, but again, there's just not damage here. Sensko's fearful charge. They're looking for a soft reset to come back through. Tyler gets put into the deep blue underneath, so he's gonna walk all the way back to point but even with that character not being there it still goes in favor of we showed up and narrowly it's 99 percent for these this kind of ventures and now a stagger coming out onto sesco is gonna set them back even further that's an extra five to ten percent that uh we showed up is gonna get there but earth shatters on both sides sound barrier for morbid going to be online shortly and buck in ahead in the graviton charging so it looks like we showed up has the advantage moving into these fights talk about putting an advantage in your favor the earth shatter finds the vast majority of the heroes wearing blue and trying to charge through was missed he'll get pooped aside by morbid and they'll stay on fire they'll stay in control of the point and now Discount Avengers need badly to kind of recontest. One more fight will do it. Yeah, this Graviton Surge can't be eaten, but a well-placed one could prevent them from contesting the point at all here, so. 
Let's take a look. Graviton Zerg B used on the doorway, but this comes through with an Earth Shatter. He escaped it. He was able to get into the back line to find himself essentially a shatter onto all the supports, plus finding the kills. Self-destruct on top of the point. It won't have enough damage to deal anything, but now recharged and refueled. The rest of the team in blue come through, and Discount Avengers will clean everything up. And at 99 and 99, we're going to go 1 1 and send this to the third area of Oasis. Yeah, really great play by Mist to just rush through that Graviton Surge. I love seeing those plays where you just hold the team off the point, don't even allow them to contest, but if you don't land it, you put yourself in a very vulnerable position, and that's exactly what happened to We Showed Up there. Well, this last map point, typically we like to see, and we will likely see, more of the same, that 3-3 goats. But if you were to put a wrench in this uh, machine that has been, we showed up, what would you possibly bring out here in this map, Suds? Well, it looks like what the Discount Avengers are thinking is possibly running that Sombra, and I think that's a good choice. Uh, you can kind of get, as I said, get the hex onto those tanks, remove the shielding, and that gives you the opening to make your damage last. Uh, oh, but... Ruby on the Moira too. Oh, absolutely. And we are going to see, we showed up running this dive with the McCree and the Brigida again. So it looks like they want to hold on this high ground. I like that call as well. Tyler can be up here relatively safely and have a lot of area to maneuver and essentially give the illusion of being slippery. Look at Bitbop. Speaking of slippery, this cheeky little monkey is sitting right on the outside looking to get into the back. And oh, they ooh, I was gonna say, almost not able to contest as the point opened up. But there will be a contest on point looking for the first bit. Mist falling low, but Bitbop will be the first blood on this engagement. Now, going in favor of the team in red of We Showed Up. They'll find the frontliner, two supports, and now looking for Sesko, who now makes himself a part of the team. That fight was almost six versus five the entire time, with the exception of a hack and a little bit of an SMG clip. But uh, again, this is the biggest problem that we've seen so far out of these Sombras is their just lack of engagement on the map. Absolutely, they aren't fighting with their team, and that basically just means they, as you said, they fight 6v5. Sesco, even if he's getting all of the information in the world, if he's not inputting some amount of damage into these fights, it's not going to do his team any good. Well, now recontesting as we get to about the 20% mark will be Discount Avengers. But again, they're not able to get to the high ground because they do not have a Winston with them. Miss taking a lot of damage early, but able to find the D-Mac. Tyler wants to find the time of day. He won't be negated it though as he's not able to find any kills. And now all the defense ultimates being triggered. No kills coming out for the side of this kind of engine, which they desperately needed off those back end of those ultimates. The Graviton Zerg will try to change the tide, but Bitbop will try to move his DPI into the range of the millions as he slaps left and right, moving on forward. But finally on the back end of a Graviton Zerg splitting up the team, it will be this kind of Avengers getting themselves the numbers on point, but they have no way of finishing off Tyler until he makes himself vulnerable, which he will, seeing that the team fight is essentially lost. But goodness, somehow, some way, they're able to find both frontliners. So it will actually be the side of We Showed Up winning that fight. Don't Un be confused. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> I believe there were two people left there on the point. It was just Tyler and Mark Killer. And they were able to just hold there and keep, keep getting those kills. They threw out the Diva self-destruct, which I didn't like, but if it works for him, do it. 79%. The Dead Eyes stalling out the movement and the peak of this kind of Avengers, giving themselves one more engagement. No ultimates on the board of the team in blue. Meanwhile, the Sound Barrier could be used defensively, and that's going to come out immediately. And Tyler is able to find a D-Max, so essentially we have a 6 on 5 again for the side of We Showed Up, wanting desperately to come back into this game and send them to the next round. They find the kill on the Samaritan. The Coalescence is being used in desperation. We're in overtime, but the kills continue to funnel for We Showed Up. Have they done enough overtime? Going to be stalled out by Yugi, but how long can this Lucio continue to put himself on? Mark Killer will thrust him away, and it will be We Showed Up taking the map and the series moving on. Yeah, a uh, huge comeback for them. They uh, lost that first map, but then uh, it had a resurgence there on the first King of the Hill map, and now this last one, they made it close, but it was a uh, good performance by We Showed Up. Discount Avengers looking good for the most part as well, just that Sombra not working out for him uh, throughout this match. 
And, you know, as we take a look, and you got to give credit to both teams for really going back and forth throughout that entire series, all the way to map three, obviously. But beyond that, again, I, one of the biggest things that I'm looking forward to as we continue to see more gameplay out of these teams is where are those differences between where they are versus where your tier two, tier one teams are? And I think we hit it on the head pretty consistently was the fact that the Sombra did not have as much of an effect as we need to see technically on paper from that chan that hero. And then beyond that, the Doomfist as well, having very minimal uh, impact when he is being played. Is that kind of what stood out to you that time, Suds? Absolutely. Um, like I was discussing earlier, from what we're hearing, Teams aren't putting a lot of time into these dive compositions, so the coordination just isn't there, and the uh, familiarity, the familiarity, the comfort on those heroes doesn't seem to be there either. Uh, the ultimates are charging unbelievably slowly. The impact of their damage and crowd control abilities just aren't coming through, and it kind of hangs their team out to dry when you're basically picking a character that puts your team down a player. Well, and on top of that, it also allows players that play Reinhardt to get more confirmed or shatters to get more confirmed graviton surges get to get these big diva nukes off on the map and i know of course speaking of all these frontliners we have to bring our frontliner main back into the conversation katrina you've got to see three maps how much did you love that last one Oh my gosh it was so much fun i i mean i know i was like oh i hope there's a may maybe a symmetra but no, seeing an aerial Farah battle was incredible first off on city center. Um, something confused me, though, a little bit about um, the reaction to a very successful pharmacy from We Showed Up. Um, Suds, why would, why would Discount Adventures switch from having a McCree and a Zenyatta to a pharmacy of their own with a Sombra? That, I can't really give you a good explanation for it. <laughs> the pharmacy makes sense. Uh, that is a solid counter to a pharmacy on the enemy team. But leaving the McCree for the Sombra, I'm not totally sure on. Yeah. I guess they wanted a little bit more damage in the fight. Uh, they didn't. They no longer had somebody to stand back with the McCree and the Zenyatta and kind of, you know, keep him healed up, use those same sight lines. But again, as we were just discussing, the Sombra play just wasn't to a level that it needed to be at in order to make good use of it. And kind of building off on that, that, that was actually... The, the thing I was noticing the most, too, during this entire match, um, how can Sombras be more impactful? Yes, we're talking about, oh, they aren't in the team fight. Well, what can, what can these teams do with their Sombras in the future I hold shift so that they do get that value out of this character? Number one, don't switch to the Sombra late because you're not going to have as many MPs to change the tide of the fights. I mean, it is a slow building ultimate, but you can combat that slow building ultimate by doing things like, all right, team, I'm going to hack the right side of the point for all of these health packs. Please use them because that <laughs> does boost up her ultimate very quickly. And that's one of the big things that we see, you know, it's one of those things that you, you don't see, but you feel from the tier one players, you know, when the diva is a little bit out of the range of the Ana, but there's a mega health pack right around the corner, she'll go thrust to that and immediately get near full HP, but also help the Sombra get that ultimate built up quickly. And then beyond that, it's just positioning things. And that's one of the things that, again, you don't really see, but you feel when the Ana is able to get himself a free line of sight, like we've mentioned, she's very stationary, but when your frontliners are maneuvering in a way to keep those heals coming out, it's it's the same way with the Sombra. Where can you find these easy hack spots? Where can you spy check the enemy without being figured out and also coming in clutch with when you can penetrate, get into the back line for free and deal some damage? We're just not seeing that coordination there yet from these teams. And Suds, um, there was just so much of a positional advantage on Gardens for We Showed Up. I, I believe Tyler on the McCree was almost uncontested most of the time on that high ground, even though there was a D.Va and a couple of more mobile heroes on the side of Discount Avengers to challenge that McCree. What, what happens when you leave such a powerful hero alone? So, I mean, you saw what happens. You lose yeah. the map. But uh, <laughs> the, the real issue there is that they were playing that against a GOATS composition. And sure, you've got the D.Va, but besides, and I guess the Sombra, the way they were running it, but you kind of still need to be playing in somewhat of a death ball formation there. You have the Reinhardt, the Zarya, you need to be supporting them for them to be effective. So you can't really just peel away to go try to mitigate that McCree because that reduces your overall team impact. And that's exactly what we saw. They just weren't able to adjust. 
Well, let's let's finish off thinking on the bright side. What was your favorite moment of this entire match or or day um, today? I hold shift. Oh, you're gonna put me on the spot like that, Katrina. Get All right, it. Suds, you go first. I, I will go first. Um, <laughs> mine was definitely that diva play at the end of King's Row from Sesco, eating that grab, landing a triple bomb unbelievable individual play there and uh just love seeing that kind of thing i know got one yet shift. i know i know <laughs> here i'll go my favorite moment <laughs> uh, i'll give you some time my favorite moment of course was seeing may finally on control center I seeing two may's going oh and you know i'm going to pick her for free for all later today um but oh, anyways mm -hmm. but no just see no seen a little bit of compositional differences was so much fun for me, even whether it was the pharmacy on Oasis, but gosh, you, you got to give it up to, to my favorite climatologist. Um, does that give you, a, does that give you enough time shift? Are you well, all the set? The thing about it was I knew you were going to pick that. And that was one of my favorite moments. So I was like, I can't steal away Katrina's thunder. I think <laughs> I'm going to have to give some shout outs to Yugi for that huge boop onto the Reinhardt. When he got boosted up right after the earth shatter, he was looking to change the game completely on King's row. And they say, no, thank you. We'll have none of that. I, there's something about this, the satisfaction of hitting a huge sound wave onto a clutch target when he's already being boosted. It's like the ultimate denial. I love it. That's probably my favorite moment. And I have been so happy to once again share this time with Suds and Bubbles and I Hold Shift, but we have one last treat for all of you at home. We have an interview tonight with Buck. So I'm so excited to, to discuss with this Zarya player all of the impact that he had on this last game. Hi, Buck. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I really enjoyed watching your Zarya. What what would you say is the most, um, what advice would you give to someone like me who's trying to learn how to play Zarya well? Uh, be patient with your graphs. Uh, save bubbles for Rang, mainly. And um, that's basically it. Just All patience. Right. All right, I'll be in not I'll be in not for normies next year. Um what was your what was your favorite match tonight to play? Um was there a specific map you really loved? Uh I would say Lee Jang mm -hmm. versus this count. I mean, you Kinda, guys time and time I'm, again, you found those graviton searches for essentially free. That had to feel pretty satisfying. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of goats myself, but we we were first into it. Like, we haven't had much practice, so it's kind of either goats or improvise. Yes, and you've been you've been getting up at 3 a.m. in the morning to practice with your team. How, how does it feel for all of your hard work to finally pay off? I mean, it feels good. Like, I would probably be in you, but NA scene is too fun. Like, it's the players are fun. The community is better. It's not as toxic as you. And does your team have any goals for tomorrow? Um, I mean, I guess just some smash everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's, that sounds good. Um, and would you like to shout out any of your teammates or anyone at home who supported you? My boy Ultraviolet. He's nutty. The 14-year-old flex god. Flex support god absolutely insane with those anti-nades so yeah. so buck i i just i just want to thank you so much for we we shot uh we saw we showed up twice tonight and your zarya was a highlight for me so thank you so much for sharing your talent and speaking with us tonight thank you all right and thank you again to everybody at home watching it's been a joy watching all of this overwatch with all of these um casters and um I think we all know that this is a really special tournament. I can't wait for us to see some more tomorrow and later next week. So once again, I hope you all have a great night. And hopefully you don't see me in ranked, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Good night.